So we're just going to have a look there at radioactivity and we're going to have a look at the exam question from 2018 which was question 5. Part D was all about radioactivity and it was worth 27 marks the entire part D there. Radioactivity is quite different to the other chemistry that we see in that um, you know it kind of goes into the subatomic world looking at protons and neutrons and electrons and actual I suppose it's the first time or the only time that we see that um, atoms of one substance change into atoms of another substance so it's quite strange and you know strictly speaking I suppose you're really gone into the realm of physics and quantum physics um, when you're looking at this kind of subatomic world but we kind of touch on it in chemistry and those of you that are studying physics will have seen it or are going to see it in physics as well so I suppose if we just go through that question 2018 question 5 part d the question says the radioisotope carbon 14 emits a beta particles and has a half-life of 5730 years so just some information at the start then it goes on to say define radioactivity and for these theory questions i've written down the answers there already you can see radioactivity is the spontaneous decay of a nucleus with the emission of one or more types of radiation and you'll have seen it already in the the coursework in the textbook or in the powerpoints you'll have seen that the radiation is alpha beta particles gamma radiation as well um, then when you look at part two, you can see that what change takes place in the structure of the nucleus of an atom when beta decay occurs. So it's looking specifically at beta decay and it says a neutron changes into a proton and an electron and that electron is released then from the nucleus. So three marks for part two, probably six marks for part one. Going on to part three, it says write a balanced equation for the beta decay of a carbon-14 nucleus. And I've left this one open so that we can do it on the video. So if we're doing this, we write down carbon-14 at six. There's still six protons in the nucleus because it's still carbon. It's just got two extra neutrons. That's what makes it carbon-14. Regular carbon should be carbon-12, which would have six protons six neutrons but in this case there's extra neutrons so when we're doing the balanced equation for something like this we have been told that it emits beta particles and you've just already explained what happens the electron is released from the nucleus so if we write down the electron and it's zero and minus one it's zero because the mass number doesn't change it it stays the same, the mass number, because an electron doesn't have uh, any mass. And if you think about it, a proton and a neutron have the same mass. So if the neutron's changing into a proton and an electron, the mass number doesn't change. Um, however, the atomic number does change. The atomic number increases by one because the neutron... Um, I suppose the atomic number is the number of protons. If there's an extra proton, then you're going to have to increase it by one. So what we're going to have is we're going to have something that has the atomic number of seven down here and the mass number of 14. Because 14 hasn't changed, the atomic number increased by one. And we have a minus one here because it's they need to add up. You need to have the same on the left and on the right. So this E has a minus 1. So that when you minus the 1 from the 7, you get 6. And if you look up your periodic table, then to see what this is, what has the 7 as its atomic number, you'll see that it's nitrogen. Nitrogen has 7 as its atomic number. It's also got 14 as its mass number so it's regular nitrogen that's produced from the carbon 14 decay so that answers part two again there's probably six marks going for part two writing the balance equation in part four we see um quite a wordy part to the question it says a fossilized a piece of fossilized you from a tree that was alive about 6,000 years ago was excavated from Boorabog County Offaly. 
When a tiny fragment of this was analysed, it was found to contain 1.5 by 10 to the 12 carbon atoms, carbon-14 atoms. Explain why the fragment of U must have contained 3.0 by 10 to the 12 carbon atoms, carbon-14 atoms, 5,730 years before the analysis. Okay, so quite a lot of words there for a chemistry question. And I've written down what this is here. Half-life is the time taken for half of the sample to decay. So 5,730 years previous, the sample contained double the amount of carbon-14. So that's what the half-life is. It's the time taken for half of the sample to decay. So this piece of tree, uh, they reckon was alive about 6,000 years ago. And what you'll also notice is that they've the numbers that they've mentioned, they say that it currently contains 1.5 by 10 to the 12 carbon 14 atoms. And they said, explain why it should have originally contained 3 by 10 to the 12 carbon 14 atoms. So you'll notice there that this number is half of what this number is. So the half life um, 5,730 years, the amount of carbon decreased by a half, carbon-14 that is. So that answers all of that wordy part. The last part then that you just need to look at is what mass of carbon-14 did the fragment contain 5,730 years before the analysis? So what mass of carbon-14 did the fragment contain at this previously, so 5,730 years ago? So we know how many atoms the fragment would have had 5,730 years ago. We have the answer here, 3.0 by 10 to the 12 atoms. So this is like now, and this is 5,730 years ago. So we know that 5,730 years ago, that the fragment, the piece of that um, tree that they analysed, contained 3 by 10 to the 12 atoms of carbon-14. Now, we know that we can change atoms into moles by dividing by Avogadro's number, 6 by 10 to the 23. So if we get our calculator here and we work out the number of moles, we get 5 by 10 to the minus 12 moles. Okay. So that's halfway there. We know that the fragment that was analysed contained 5 by 10 to the minus 12 moles of carbon-14 5,730 years ago. But the question asked us about the mass. What mass did the fragment contain? We know that we can go from the number of moles into the mass in grams by multiplying by the MR. And we also know that the MR is 14. So if we multiply 5 by 10 to the minus 12 by 14, we get 7 by 10 to the minus 11, and that is in grams. So this is the MR, carbon 14, it's 14. This is Avogadro's number. And this is the answer, the mass in grams of carbon-14 that was present in the fragment that was analysed 5,730 years ago, before any decay occurred.